All right, in uh, page 1097 of Algebra 1, we're looking at page 28 and 29. Multiplying monomials. Just makes you feel like you're really doing algebra when you're throwing around terms like monomial, polynomial, binomial, trinomial. So a monomial just means that there's no pluses or minuses. All, everything's being multiplied together, okay? And um, so I'm taking a couple of actual problems, the ones that I'm predicting students may have trouble with here on page 29. When we are multiplying, we're not looking for like terms, okay? Like terms was on the previous page, and those are that's when we're adding. So we're looking for the same variables raised to the same exponents. Here, we are multiplying. And actually, if we were to spread this out, a to the third would be like a times a times a times b, okay? And then in here, I have a and b times b times b times b. So b to the fourth is the same as b, 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 b. a to the third, a, 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 sorry. <laughs> now, <clears throat> do you remember from our lesson about positive and negative numbers that if we're multiplying and we have two the same, so two negatives, that actually makes it a positive. Sometimes I like to think of it this way. If you have two negatives, they become a positive, all right? And if you have several, let's say you have five negatives. Well, every pair of negatives becomes a positive and then there'll be one left over. So the answer would be negative. So an odd number would make it negative. So I'm looking at this next problem, one, two, three negatives. So that means the answer will be negative. Whereas here, I only have two. They're both negative, both of these monomials. So a negative times a negative makes the answer positive. So we've already determined that it'll be positive. Now I look at the whole thing and I'm gonna take the total number of A's and that will become the exponent on A. One, two, three, four, how many B's do we have total? One, two, three, four, five B's. All right. Now, is there a shortcut? Yes, don't you love shortcuts that work? If I looked over here, and see that a has an exponent of three. This one, the exponent is not written, so we can assume it's one. Here it's one, so I can add three plus one to get the exponent of four. Here I can add one plus four to get the exponent of five. So when we're multiplying, if the base, okay, the variable base is the same, we add the exponents. So let's try to follow that rule now and do this long one. Let's take the numbers out front. <clears throat> we already determined that it will become negative because we have three negatives. So we have an odd number of negatives. Eight times two is 16. 16 times three is 48. Or you could go this way. Three times two is six. Six times eight is 48. Times one, okay, so 48. And then I'm not gonna finish this one for you, but let's do this in your head. Let's add up the exponents on A. So we have two plus one plus two. So write down your variable with that exponent, and then let's go back and we add the Bs. There's none here. We have two here plus one plus two. So that becomes the exponent on the five. I mean, on the, whoops, on the B. <clears throat> Let's look at this last one. This one does not use parentheses to indicate times. It's using these big dots. So dots also is a way of indicating multiplication. In algebra, we don't tend to use the x for multiplication anymore because we're using that all the time as a variable. But the same thing here, 45 times one times one. So you already know what the coefficient is. They're all positive, so you know the answer is positive. And then let's look at, we have one x here and three x's here. So the variable becomes x to the, write it down. And then you look at y to the third, y to the oneth. And so now you can write down that you have y to the you add the exponents, okay? So not too bad. Um, hopefully with those three examples and studying page 28 and the other examples you see there, you'll feel a little more confident. 
uh, to do all of page 29. I encourage you, after you do every one of these pages, stop and score. Don't try to work all the way up to a checkup. And then score, score one page at a time, maybe even half a page, just to make sure you're understanding and then uh, right away do your corrections, okay? And we'll be back to look at division in just a minute.